The 6 cm or 5.7 GHz amateur radio band is accessible to standard as well as advanced licensees in Australia. It's the higher of the two Wi-Fi bands, but doesn't seem to suffer from the noise problem like its poor 2.4 GHz or 13 cm cousin. Antennas are cheap and readily available in the form of dishes and panels. Well, the panel antennas are just in moderate gain. I'm not sure what the gain is. Probably about, uh, I don't know, 15 dB perhaps. Not sure what they quote. Uh, so, uh, yeah, look, uh, in line of sight situation, it's not really a problem. So if you're keen to dip your toe into the microwave bands, keep watching. Wow, yeah, that's 5 or 9 plus, 5 or 9 plus. Wow, amazing. I haven't even picked my antenna. Over, over. Yeah, Roger, right, right here, 40 over 9. 40 over 9 here, Rob, that's amazing. Could you hear Gamma? And we're going to change the Gamma there before going. Yeah. Microwave bands like HF and VHF bands have their own unique set of characteristics and 6 cm is no different. It's a band that seems to play second fiddle to 3 cm or 10 GHz. It's very much a band to have in the kit, especially if you like going portable. Uh, well, it's great, great to work you uh, uh, portable on 5760. This is our uh, first uh, portable contact with uh, so 5.7 so, uh, gigahertz is also a band that will be available in ICOM's upcoming IC905 SHF transceiver. No change in strength and um, I don't see any different either there um, here. In VK3, 6 centimetres is more by appointment than on the lower bands. There's virtually no activity outside of SSB on 5760.1 MHz. So if you choose to go down this path, it's best to find a friend who wants to join you, or reach out to others who are already active on this band. Antennas for 6 cm are readily available. Dishes and panels are the best as grid packs are too porous. You'll find them anywhere and everywhere online between $80 and up. As these antennas are high in gain, the beam width is quite sharp, meaning 6 cm is best suited to a point-to-point -point contact. That's really the nature of the microwave beast the higher you climb in frequency. Is a good place to start. The ability to adjust the antenna in both the horizontal and vertical axis is important. Your choice of coax and length is also critical at this frequency. Keeping in mind that 3dB loss is halving your power, LMR400, which is also known as LL400 and CNT400, loses 3.5dB every 10 metres at 5.8 GHz. LMR400 is a semi-rigid coax in an RG8 form factor and isn't really that flexible. Your interconnecting cables also need consideration as to coax type and length and be sure to avoid right angle coax adapters. A transverter is a radio frequency device that consists of an up converter and a down converter in one unit, used in conjunction with transceivers, to change the range of frequencies over which the transceiver can communicate. Getting a 6 cm transverter can be a challenge. Your choices are buying one from a very limited number of manufacturers, building one, or finding a second-hand one. Kuhn Electronics, based in Germany, are probably the most well-known supplier of microwave transverters for amateur radio. This is the Kuhn 6 cm transverter. Down East Microwave in the US is another supplier of ready-to-use transverters. 
The Coon Transverter has a user configurable IF using internal jumpers in the 2 metre or 70 centimetre band and can be driven with up to 5 watts of RF power for 250 milliwatts out. 250 milliwatts is more than capable of going the distance at this frequency, providing conditions are good, you're in an elevated location and your cabling is up to scratch for microwave. A couple of watts is nice though. A sequencer or manual switch is required to engage a coaxial relay, which will switch the antenna between transmit and receive. This is the Minikit sequencer. It's a kit which is available online. You'll need to find a coaxial relay capable of switching 5.7 gigahertz. Try and find a fail-safe relay as there's less work involved in getting these going compared to that of a latching relay. The Kuhn transverters have a TX plus 12 volts output, which is ideal for switching a relay and will negate the need to building a sequencer. This is Kuhn's recommended configuration for a basic system. Working our way around the diagram, you'll notice a 10 MHz input. This is an optional 10 MHz external reference source for locking the local oscillator inside the transverter. From experience, the internal Kuhn oscillators are solid and reliable. Next is a 12 volt power source. Under one amp is required during transmission. A monitor provision allows you to connect a meter to give you a visual reference of transmit power. This is optional, but recommended. The PTT connector, when grounded, will switch the transverter into transmit. Alternatively, 12 volts on the IF cable will also set the unit to transmit. Most modern IF radios offer a TX ground via the accessory jack. Connect your QRP radio to the IF input. This can be a radio such as the IC705. Avoid radios capable of high power outputs, as ALC overshoot may spike the transverter with more than 5 watts. Separate TX and RX SMAs are provided on the transverter, hence the reason for a coaxial relay. Finally, a plus 12 volt TX is provided for powering a relay. This output is capable of up to 400 milliamps, and most relays are rated at around 200 milliamps, so there's a bit of headroom. As mentioned earlier, choose a QRP radio as an IF. A radio such as the IC705 is ideal, as it has a waterfall, which is super handy for finding wayward signals up and down the band. You can also configure it to be a beeper, which will save you building one, and essentially causes the radio to transmit a series of beeps, ideally used for path alignment. Beeper is beeping as we speak. Like the call frequency in Australia is 5760.1 MHz. There you go, success. <laughs> SG Laboratories also make quality microwave transverters, and at the time of making this video, a 6 cm transverter is being designed and prototyped. No date yet has been given for its general availability. All that's left to do now is to build your transverter into a rugged, go-anywhere box. This can be half the fun of getting onto the microwave bands. Remember, use quality components, good RF connection techniques, and keep your cable lengths short. Find your local microwave radio operators and get involved. They'll be just as happy to see you as you them. <laughs> <laughs>